this morning, when you need him, he said to reach out and touch him. And you can do that this morning. Today is Palm Sunday. And uh, it's, a, it's a, a symbol of expression of joy in our Lord as in Christ's triumph entry into Jerusalem where much people gathered and took branches, palm trees, and went forth and meet him. And the word of the Lord declares, and the multitude that went before and that followed cried, saying, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna means Jesus saves. He's here to save us this morning. He's here to save us from whatever we need to be saved from this morning. He came to heal the brokenhearted, to deliver the captive this morning, to recover sight to the blind, and to set at liberty those that are bruised. So whatever you're, you're, you're facing this morning, whatever your diagnostic is this morning, the doctor might say it's incurable, but let me tell you something this morning. I am here as a living testimony where the doctor said I will never walk again. Look at me this morning. Look at me this morning. I was on life support. And I can remember seeing Pastor Smith come into my room. And he prayed. I can see all the people gathered around my bedside. Now I'm on life support. I can't see. I am out here in La La Land. But I can, my spirit could see all what is going on in that room. And they were singing songs and reading the scriptures to send me off on the other side. But Jesus said, no. Jesus said, no. I have much work for you to do on this side of the sun. And so I'm here today, this morning. I'm here to tell you this morning, tap into Jesus. He's here to deliver. He's here to set you free. He's here to give you whatever your heart desires. So as we celebrate him this morning, and as we wave our branches this morning, let us serve him in spirit and in truth this morning. He's here to save. He's here to save you. He's here to save us all this morning. May God bless you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. Lord, we worship you this morning. Let's all pray. Lord, we give you glory and honor. Lord, we thank you this morning for another day, Lord, that you have made. Lord, we thank you for your grace and your mercy. We thank you, Holy Spirit, for your love. We thank you, mighty God, for being the King of kings. We thank you, oh God, for being the Lord of lords. Father, we hail you this morning. Jesus, we hail you. Hosanna to the King of kings. Hosanna to the Lord of lords. Hosanna to the King of all kings. Father, we hail you and exalt you. We worship you this morning, mighty God. As we come before your throne room, Holy Spirit, we worship you, God, because you said they that worship you must worship you in spirit and in truth. Mighty God, we exalt you, mighty God. We lift up your name this morning. You are the King of kings and the Lord of lords. You are the conquering lion of the tribe of Judah. Lord God, you are the great I am. You are the rock in a wheel. Land. You are the shelter, Lord God, in the time of storm. Father God, you are our bridge when the water is troubled, Holy Spirit. Oh God, you are our bridge, Lord God. You are our rock and defense. You are our hiding place. Mighty God, as we come before you this morning, we worship you, Jehovah God. You are Jehovah Jiry, our provider. Lord God, you are Jehovah Nisi, the great warrior of our souls. Oh God, you are our banner, mighty God. You are Jehovah Shalom, the God of peace, hallelujah. Jehovah Shama, your presence will go before us, Holy Spirit. Mighty God, you are Jehovah Rapha, our healer, hallelujah. 
hallelujah this morning mighty god when we have our troubled minds you heal our troubled minds oh candela messia father god you are the rose of sharon mighty god not just the healer you are the bomb in gilead holy spirit hallelujah father god sometimes we are problems mighty god sometimes we are sick but mighty god you are the bomb in gilead oh candela messia father god help us to understand mighty god that your presence will always hold the poor of oh candela messia mighty god you are excellent hallelujah excellent in all the earth oh god the heavens declare your glory the firmament so with your handiwork day unto day utter its speech night unto night so with knowledge father god the world belongs to you everything that in the world oh god belongs to you lord god father god you have founded this world upon the flood holy spirit oh mighty god you have founded the world upon the flood you have established it upon the water who shall ascend unto the hill of the lord who shall stand in his holy place he that hath clean hands and a pure heart he that hath not lifted up his soul unto vanity be lifted up he everlasting doors and the king of glory shall come in who is this king of glory the lord strong and mighty the lord mighty in battle lift up your heads all the gates and be lifted up you are the king of glory father god you are great great jehovah god you are the omnipotent god you are all powerful you are the omniscient god you know all things you are the omnipresent god you can be here anywhere at the same time you are god oh candela messia you are in a class all by yourself mighty god in our down times you are god when we're up you are still god in our sad times you are still god you sit on the throne mighty god and as we come this morning mighty god to exalt you we come this morning oh god to lift you up holy spirit you have our our attention you take the attention lord it is yours holy spirit hallelujah you said in your word he that dwelleth in the secret place of the most high god we shall abide under the shadow of the almighty father god when we dwell in the secret place we shall not be afraid of the terror by night by the arrows that fly at that day time the pestilence that walk at that night time you will give your angels charge over us to keep us mighty god yes we dash our foot against a stone father god help us to live in the secret place we do not want to be just a visitor of the secret place but we want to live in the secret place father god when we stay in the secret place mighty god we guarantee protection protection from the enemy mighty god when we live in the secret place we are endued with your power lord god
Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, come on, somebody give God praise in this place today. Oh, somebody give God glory in this place today. Oh, come on, somebody celebrate the King. He's the ruler of everything. We came to lift up his name on today. We came to lift up the Lord most high because he is worthy to be praised. This is the day that the Lord has made. And we have the awesome responsibility to rejoice and to be glad in it. So I rejoice in the God of my salvation. I rejoice in the King of Kings. I rejoice in the Lord of Lords. I rejoice in the great physician. He is a mighty God. He's mighty to heal. He's mighty to deliver. He's mighty to set free. Clap your hands, all ye people, and shout unto God with a voice of triumph. We are a victorious people today. I heard you, Sister Althea. We are victorious. Hallelujah. We are victorious. We are not defeated. But the enemy is defeated. But God is exalted. Hallelujah. So we exalt you, Holy Spirit. We exalt you, the Lamb of God. We exalt you, O merciful one. Because you are worthy to be praised. You are the great I am. You are the Lion of Judah. You are the healer of my soul. You are the great comforter. Yes, you are. So come on and magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name today together. This is a good day to give him glory. This is a good day to magnify his name because he didn't have to give you another opportunity. He didn't have to grant you the activities of your limbs and he did not have to give you life, health, and strength. So clap your hands and give him glory. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Come on, let's give God some high praise in here today. The Lord is high above the heavens and his glory above the nations. Come on and clap your hands in this house today. Oh, come on and rejoice in this house. Your head. Oh. Come on, we give God the highest 
of the Lord. Glad to be in the house of the Lord. Truly this is the day that the Lord has made and we shall rejoice and be glad therein. I say like Peter did on the mountain of transfiguration. It's good for us to be here. Look at somebody and tell them it's good for us to be here. As a matter of fact, if that person didn't respond, find somebody else and tell them it's good for us to be here on this Palm Sunday when we celebrate the triumphant entry of Jesus into Jerusalem. Amen. As he entered into that city, they said he came in on a donkey and the people of God took palms from the trees and they laid them down as he traveled over them and they cried, Hosanna! which is interpreted, Lord, save us. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, save us. And that's what he came to do. He came to save that which was lost. Be seated in the presence of the Lord. Amen. We want to thank God for those that are in the sanctuary, those that are watching via stream, those that are on our iChurch Praise Tabernacle everywhere. We thank God for them. Amen. We thank God because we've got some new members today that has completed their new member orientation. And we just want to pause for a quick moment to, uh, to thank God for those that are now officially a part of the PTI Nation. Praise Tabernacle International Church. Amen. And once I call your name, I want you to come up so you can get your certificate. Um, Sister, is it Basil Pitt? Basil? Is Basil in the room? Basil's not in the room yet? All right. It's still early. It's still early. Vivette Adamson? Vivette Adamson? Is Vivette in the room? Okay, Vivette's not in the room. Amen. All right. How about Shirley? Is Shirley in the room? Shirley Comrie? Here she comes. Come on. Y'all come on, let's thank God for Shirley. Bless you, Shirley. What about Kayla Barnett? Is Kayla in the room? There go Kayla. Kayla was at Bible study Wednesday and she's back in the church on the day. Bless you, Kayla. Amen. And we just want to give to you the right hand of fellowship. Amen. Just stand here, if you will. Amen. And we just want to salute you. Amen. And thank you for making PTI your church home and welcome to the PTI nation. Don't be a stranger. All right, you're officially members of the Praise Tabernacle International Church. Now it's time to get to serving. Amen. We don't just have members. We have people that connect with this ministry to serve. So as the Lord places upon your heart, find that ministry that you're going to serve in so you can make somebody, impact somebody else's life through your service to the Lord. Amen. All right, bless y'all. Welcome to the family. Amen. Let's receive our ministry of worship as they come prepare our hearts for the word. Amen. Now is our time to go further into the worship. Hallelujah. As we lift our hands. And as we lift our voices in total surrender unto God, when we worship God, we're worshiping him for the very perfection of who he is. We concentrate on him, his deity, his sovereignty, his mercy, his grace. Hallelujah. We come, hallelujah, to the most holy place at this point, and we offer up worship to God. How many of you know that it's easier for the word to go forth when the ground has been set, when the true worshipers worship the Father in spirit and in truth, and when the true worshipers come together in one accord? So as we unite with one another in one accord, hallelujah, and our spirits are connecting with each other's spirit, we come for only one reason, and that is to give the Lord the glory that is due his name. So what is our posture today? Amen. Are we bowed down because we're sad? And 
are we bowed, bowed down and are downtrodden in our spirits because we got a bad report this week? Or do we look to the hills from which cometh our help, knowing that all of our help cometh from the Lord? Hallelujah. He's bigger than our circumstances. He is bigger than our problems. He's bigger than whatever the doctor can say. He's bigger than whatever the lawyer says. He, we serve a big God, a great God. And not only that, we serve a good God. So we worship you on today for your goodness, oh God. Bless your name, Jesus. I love you, Lord. For your mercy never fails me. And all my days, I am held in your hand. From the moment that I wake up until I lay my head, oh, I will see of the goodness of God. I love you, Lord, for your mercy never fails me, and all my days I am held in your hand. Lord, from the moment that I wake up until I lay my head, oh, I will see of the goodness of God. Yeah, because for my life you have been faithful. Yeah. And all my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am able Oh, I will see of the goodness of God Oh, I will
Over and over and over, you keep blessing. Over and over and over. 
worship. You owe them a praise. You owe them a hand wave. You owe them a thank you, Jesus. You owe them the Lord, I love you. Because when I think of the goodness of Jesus, with the victory. Pray. They have emerged this week with favor. Pray. Sickness couldn't kill them. Depression couldn't hold them down. could not frustrate them because they are anointed to survive anointed to survive every struggle every situation every circumstance you anointed to make it through Everything the devil meant for evil this week, God blocked it and turned it for your good. Press those hands, squeeze, squeeze that hand. I press joy in this hand. I press peace in this hand. I press faith in this hand. I'm holding the hand of a warrior. I'm holding the hand of a fighter. And I declare, as I hold your hand, I'm releasing a strength, a strength like no other. I press strength, supernatural strength. That when you get weak, his strength will rise in you. I pray that not only will you be strengthened, 
but I pray that you be anointed. I press a fresh anointing upon you now that you are anointed for such a time as this. And I decree and declare that you shall not die but you shall live. I need you to speak that in the atmosphere. You shall not die. You shall live. Victory is on you. Victory is your inheritance. Victory is your pathway. Victory is your destiny. If you believe it, if you receive it, I need you to loose those hands and give God glory. Praise Him like you got victory. Come on, where my talk back church at? Praise Him like you overcome. Now, if you clap those hands, I need you to look at your neighbor like you got the Holy Ghost and say, Neighbor, I don't know what you went through last week. But just in case you didn't realize it, I got to tell you something. You made it. That neighbor wasn't the right neighbor. Find somebody else in the sanctuary and say, neighbor, no, y'all got to find somebody else. That neighbor didn't get it. Find, find somebody else. Find them in the Holy Ghost and say, hey, neighbor, I don't know what you went through last week, but just in case you forgot, I got something to tell you. You made it. Oh, yes, you did. You made it. Oh, yes, you did. Hey. If you know you made it, take the next 30 seconds and shout like you're going crazy. know my story you don't know what I had to go through to get here but the devil messed up he let you make it saints of all used to say the devil thought it had and I got away I ain't got Put your feet on the floor. If you're going to testify with your feet, I'm going to give you 10 seconds, 20 seconds. Make it 60. Testify with your feet.
keep jumping.
that the person or persons that you expect to be the loudest, most vocal, can prove to be at times when you least expect it to be the most quiet. The other day, while getting ready, come to the church yesterday for a funeral service, I was on the phone in the morning with my grandson, Hunter, FaceTime. My wife had called me this week. She was so excited. Hunter is now about to turn two, and he's learning to speak full phrases. And she experienced Hunter loud and speaking a phrase, and she called me excited and said, you're not going to believe Hunter was on the phone, and out of nowhere I was just working, and he looked at me on the camera and said, what are you doing? She was so happy and excited that Hunter asked her, Mimi, what are you doing? So yesterday, my wife and I were preparing to come, and she says, honey, you, you got to hear. You got to hear what Hunter said. You got you to hear him say it. Kyla, put, where Hunter? Hunter gets on the screen, and he's, he's saying, pow, pow. And she says, Hunter, say, Hunter, say, what you doing? And Hunter looked at her. <laughs> she said, come on, Hunter, you said it the other day. Then my daughter Kyla in the background, come on, say, what you doing? And he looked at her. Isn't it amazing that when you think or when you want somebody to say something, they have the tendency to make you look like you the crazy one. Because when they are expected to speak the phrase, they say absolutely nothing. If you attended a wedding reception, it's normal and to be expected that the groom and the bride will express their gratitude to the guests who attended their ceremony and presented them with gifts. If you attended a graduation party, you expect the graduate to express his or her gratitude to everyone who encouraged them on their educational journey and supported them in the pursuit of their degree. At some point in that graduation party, they'll stand up and they'll tell you thank you. I want to thank this person for their contribution. I want to thank this person for their contribution. Even, even if you attended a, a funeral repast uh, or funeral, it is customary that the funeral home or someone would stand on behalf of the family and thank those that have prayed for them, those that have supported them, those that have gave cards and flowers, those that, the, those that were just there for them during their time of bereavement. You expect people to respond with a form of gratitude when you've done something for them that they could not think to do for themselves. When the Kansas City Chiefs of the other month won the Super Bowl, the star player Travis Kelsey stood at the end of the game, Sister Diana, and he thanked everybody, thanked his mama, thanked his coach, thanked his team because he realized that even though he may be the star player, that without the team and without the support of others and without the investment of others, he would not have been able to achieve that milestone a back-to-back -back Super Bowl. I'm going somewhere. Those, my brothers and sisters, are just mere examples of those who respond accordingly, honoring those who have contributed to special moments in their lives. And while I realize that we all in this sanctuary this morning have experienced the miracle working power of God who saved us, who raised us, who redeemed us, who brought us, who died for us, who 
sacrificed his life for us who woke us up this morning clothed us in our right mind gave us the activities of our limbs gave us a reasonable portion of our health and strength and my brothers and sisters we all should be making our boasts in the Lord allowing the humble to hear thereof my hell yeah and be glad we should be inviting others to magnify the Lord with us and let us exalt his name together we should all be bragging on the goodness of God and the mercies of God and the love of God and the kindness of God and the faithfulness of God and the healings of God we should all be testifying of his goodness giving honor to God who is the head of my life pastor members and friends I stand and want to thank God I'm sure that there's somebody brother Carl under the sound of my voice that can testify if it had not been for the Lord I thought I had a talk back church who was on my side I wouldn't be here but yet there are those like my grandson Hunter that when you expect them to talk they mute mouth What is mute mouth? Mute mouth is a person that you expect to say something, but they have nothing to say. I'm going to say it again. A person that should be talking, but excuse my English, ain't saying nothing. And some of you, oftentimes, Come in the house of God. He's not the visitor. You're the visitor. It's his house. And we have the unmitigated God to enter into his house and not say nothing to him. I know you ain't saying nothing to me now. So I know you ain't saying nothing to him then. We are mute mouth. Mute mouth miracles. He did something special for each and every one of us. And every one of us, the least we can do to show our gratitude is tell him thank you. I know it's not Thanksgiving service. I know Thanksgiving is in November. But my Bible says that in all things we are to give thanks for this is the will of God can we take a five second take a break and think about what God has done for you and open your mouth and tell him now if you ain't saying nothing you mute mouth I invite you I invite you this morning, grab a chair, and let's sit at this table. Pull up a chair, and let's sit down at this table in Simon the leper's house. We're not the only ones at the table. We have Jesus, who is on his way to Calvary. It's Palm Sunday. Actually, it's the Saturday, it is the Sabbath day, the eve of Palm Sunday. Uh, it's about March 28th, A.D. 33, the evening before Palm Sunday. By the way, I forgot to tell you, this is a celebration dinner in honor of Jesus who just recently raised Lazarus from the dead. Say that again. It's a celebration dinner in honor of Jesus. Jesus is the honoree. He's the one and the reason that everybody is at the table. I'm going to say that again for those that's in the back. You wouldn't be at the table if it had not been but Jesus 
working in your life. Look at your neighbor say, welcome to the table. Now, this house is said in Matthew's account and Mark's account to have been belonging to Simon the leper who was amongst the others who benefited from the miracle working power of Jesus Christ present in the house. Look at your neighbor say, we in the house. Come on, I need you to look at somebody tell them we in the house. But you got Martha in the house. You have Mary in the house. And you have Judas Iscariot in the house. You have Lazarus in the house. But guess what? Jesus is in the house. Oh, if you ain't got excited about nothing, you ought to get excited by the mere fact that Jesus is in the house. I know that don't mean something to everybody, but it means something to me whenever I can be in a place and Jesus is my whole attitude changes my whole posture changes something on the inside starts stirring up cause I'm in the presence of Mary Martha the sisters of Lazarus understand that if the dinner is designed to celebrate and honor Jesus, uh, then everything we do must be focused towards Jesus. Can we all agree? If it's the honoree, if Jesus is the honoree, then everything that takes place at dinner must be centered around Jesus. How would you like for us to come to your birthday party? You the honoree. But we make it all about us. Y'all don't want to say nothing. I knew I had some mute mouth miracles. See, you don't want nobody coming to your party, raining on your parade, stealing all your glory, stealing all your attention, stealing all the gifts. That all the accolades that should be coming to you, instead of them coming to you, they want them for themselves. Ain't that like some of us? When we go to somebody's party, we come in late because we want people to notice us. Guess what, church? It ain't about us. The honoree is Jesus. I'm going somewhere, hang in here for a moment because the host, Simon the leper, has availed his home for the celebration, might we suppose, because he was once a leper and was healed by Jesus, although there's no biblical trace to this working of this miracle. We have no record of Simon the leper's miracle. All we know is that he was a leper. And now he's opening his home to Jesus. And Mary and Martha, we're, we're familiar with them because Martha is the first one in chapter 11 of John who meets Jesus when, he, when she brings him word that if he had been there, her brother would not have died. Uh, we are exposed to Mary, who is the sister of Martha, the sister of Lazarus who confronts Jesus when he comes to the house and tells him the same thing that Martha told him if you had been here my brother Lazarus would not have died in this text we are exposed to four distinctive demeanors from four different individuals you've got Mary, Martha Lazarus and you got Judas all of them do something different in the text but remember the occasion is it's time to celebrate Jesus tell somebody it's time to celebrate Jesus nudge your neighbor wake them up tell them it's time to celebrate Jesus because the text is tailored to teach us that Martha serves Martha is serving the table Martha chapter 11 she was mad Chapter 12, she's serving. Mary is under the table. 
at the feet of Jesus with her alabaster box as Matthew's account gives to us. She breaks it open and she anoints the feet of Jesus with her hair. Judas is at the table complaining about Mary's worship investment. He's complaining saying that the oil should have been sold and the money put in the box that he keeps because he got sticky fingers. Uh, he got sticky fingers oh my god but then you have old brother Lazarus y'all remember Lazarus don't you chapter 11 tells us that Lazarus was dead in the grave for four days Lazarus who was bound by grave clothes Lazarus who was stinking in the grave Lazarus whose name means the Lord has helped Lazarus the one that Jesus loveth is at the table. Lazarus, the one that had been carried by the angelic pallbearers into the bosom of Abraham. Lazarus is at the table because now, church, he's been escorted back from reward to labor. He's been escorted back from the celestial shores to the mundanes of Jerusalem. He's been escorted back from the place of peace now to a place of chaos and Lazarus is sitting at the table and Lazarus we expect Lazarus to be the one that's making the most noise we expect Lazarus to be the one that's worshiping Christ we expect Lazarus to be the one that's telling them thank you but instead of Lazarus saying something the text says he sat at the table I got a problem I got an issue y'all indulge me for a moment y'all come with me I got a problem with Lazarus cause you tell me how is it that you can be brought from life brought back from death to life and sit at the table with the one that called your name and said Lazarus come forth and you came out of that grave he told them loose him and let him go and now you was dead but you alive and you mean to tell me you ain't got nothing to say you know some people like that. You done did the most for them. And they won't even tell you thank you. You helped them when they was down. And they wouldn't even tell you thank you. They didn't see you no card. They didn't show you no appreciation. Lazarus shows us what it's like to be a mute mouth miracle. So. Why is the person you sitting next to right now got their mouth closed and ain't saying nothing? Because I don't know whether you realize it or not, but you sitting next to a miracle. Look at your neighbor. Hey, say neighbor. See, y'all won't even look at him. Look at your neighbor and say neighbor. You are a miracle. But one thing you can't be, and that is a miracle and mute mouth. Because if the Lord has done anything for you, you ought to open up your mouth. Matter of fact, I'm going to give it to you in a reverse way. If he ain't done nothing for you, don't say nothing. Some of y'all still ain't saying nothing reason being uh, because you got that Lazarus syndrome. Uh, but I break that Lazarus syndrome. Uh, let the redeemed of the Lord uh, say so. Okay. Now, hypothetically, 
speaking, maybe we need to call Lazarus into an interview room. So Lazarus, come here. Why are you sitting at the table with the Savior and your mouth is muted? Well, maybe it's because Ted says he's a guest at the table. Well, when you are a guest at the table, that suggests that you're equal with everybody that's at the table with you. Maybe it is in his mind that my presence is enough. I don't have to say nothing. My presence is the gift. My brothers and sisters, Lazarus might be blinded by what I call uh, uh, he's allowing his relationship with the Savior to blind him of the deserving appreciation that is due to Jesus in reference to the miracle of resurrection. And like Lazarus, many of us have been blinded by the spirit of familiarity. We become so familiar with church we become so familiar with Christ that we don't praise him as we should because we feel as if he should have done it. You got to know that everything God did in your life and my life, we did not deserve it. God's not obligated to do nothing but be God. And we get caught up in our positions, our seats, and our titles and equivalent our mere presence as a show of gratitude. But Judas, Judas, oh, you can't say that your presence means something because even the devil knows how to show up. You need Bible? I got Bible for you. Back in Job, Satan was going up and down, to and fro, and the Bible says even Satan Satan came into his presence. So just because you show up, that ain't saying enough. You can't just show up. You got to show up and speak up. Look at your neighbor. Say you got to show up and speak up. You ought to have a hallelujah in your mouth. You ought to have an amen in your mouth. You ought to have a Lord I love you in your mouth. Let the high praises of God be in your mouth. You, was, you at the table but this is the reason you shouldn't be mute mouth don't get caught up on your position because it's the Lord that changed your position because Dr. Smith his last position was in the grave and God done moved him from the grave to the table See, you in the position you in right now because God knows how to call you from death back to life. And you who were dead in trespasses and sin, he has called us, he has brought us and made us to sit with him in heavenly places. You in the seat you in right now because God looked beyond your fault and saw your need. Maybe it's not. Maybe it's not because he's seated at the table as a guest. Maybe it's due to failed relational expectations. What you mean? Lazarus in chapter 11 is called the one whom he loves. So maybe Lazarus is dealing with failed relational expectations. Lazarus, do you feel some type of way because Jesus heard you was sick and he didn't show up for four days? I mean, he, when he found out you were sick, he didn't rush to your rescue. 
Was, was this the first step that sent the relationship in the wrong direction? Is your mouth muted because you sit in the seat but you wrestle with the love that you have for him? Because how can you say you love me but you don't show up right when I need you? How can you say you love me and I still die of the disease? How can you say you love me, God, and you let me go through and suffer? How can you say you love me and you let let me experience so much pain how can you let me say you love me and you take my loved ones away from me there's somebody under the sound of my voice right now you ain't got nothing to say because you're dealing with relational expectations that you have been let down because God didn't show up and move like you wanted him to you don't believe me Look at what Mary and Martha say. If you had been here, my brother would not have died. Which is to suggest they already knew that Jesus had the power to hold the hands of death. So if Jesus, you got the power to stay death, then if you had showed up, we wouldn't even be in this predicament. He didn't do what you felt he should have done when you felt he should have do it. I know that didn't sound right. Can you be honest with yourself today and say there are some things that I felt God should have did and he didn't do them and it's caused me to feel some type of way? Oh, don't act like you ain't never felt like that. <laughs> I'm anointed. I preach every Sunday. And sometimes when God does not meet my expectations, I look back and say, God, I thought we was cool. I thought I was your boy. I thought I was your son. I thought I was your servant. I thought we rolled together. Remember, we roll together. We ride together. I do what you say do. I move like you say move. The least you can do, God, is get me out of the trouble I'm in. But I hear Job say, Saying, though you slay me yet will I trust him yes life may be hard but Job says it another way and maybe this will be for five of y'all and I'll make number six here it is he may not come when you want him to but I believe I got a witness in here slap your neighbor high high. say he's always on time I mean, is this how you treat people you love? You show up late? Is this how you treat people that you say is your friend? Every time you came to Bethany, and every time you came to town, you hung out with me and my sisters. So the least you can do is when you found out I was sick, come and raise me up. You done healed everybody else. Come on, let's talk. You healed the lame man. You healed blind by the mayors. You at the end of your ministry. This is the final. This is the final journey. You getting ready to go to the cross, and you mean to tell me we couldn't do one last hurrah together? But don't you understand that the worse the situation is, the greater the glory God gets out of it. See, why are you thinking God should have showed up when you wanted him to? God likes to set the stage for the audience because the Bible says that Jesus showed up late so that they might believe. There's some people that might not get what there's some people that might not come to know Jesus if he does it on your terms. But if he does it on his terms, he'll save a whole multitude. And the Bible says, that if he had showed up when it was sickness it would have just been Lazarus and Mary and Martha that could testify but when he shows up four days later there's an audience outside 
side of the tomb and Jesus in front of the audience prays to the Father and says, Father, I know you hear me when I pray, but so that they might believe, work this miracle. Lazarus, come forth. And Lazarus came out in front of the whole audience. got to close. I'm over time. Look at your neighbor. This ain't even in my sermon. But this is going to bless somebody that's going through something. But grab that neighbor by the hand and say, neighbor, I'm glad that God didn't show up when I wanted him to because the glory is greater because he showed up when he needed to. He showed up. Matter of fact, look at him in the eye and say, neighbor, God is setting the stage for the next miracle he's getting ready to work in your life if you believe it if you receive it open up your mouth and shout y'all ain't shouting one more question I want to ask class. Can I ask him one more question? Y'all don't mind, do you? Can I ask him one more question? Hey, Lazarus! He didn't come when you wanted him, but he still raised you. It's not a question of your friendship because you at the table with him. So, Lazarus, is it because now that he brought you back, you got to die again. Because the first time he dies, Jesus resurrects him. But the next time he dies, he got to wait. See, the tax, the tailor, the tax to five that the Jews, the scribes, and the priests. If you look at the next verse in verse 9, the Bible says, Now that Lazarus is raised from the dead, that they're now conspiring to kill Jesus, and they're going to kill Lazarus too. So, hey, Jesus, you call me back from a place of peace. Now I got to run for my life. You called me back from a reward. Now I got to fear if I'm going to live to see the next day. Don't you know that miracles come with consequences? And now Lazarus has to flee and run because the church folk that should be celebrating his miracle is now mad because watch the text and I'm done. I promise you my laptop is closed and my Bible is shut. That's the whole sermon today. But the text tells us that they find out that Lazarus got raised from the dead and the audience that Jesus raised him in front of are all now saying we were to follow Jesus so they mad now because they have left their religious system and now they made a decision to follow Jesus and that's the main reason right there that you should not be mute mouth and that is because you're the testing that you've gone through the trials that you've gone through wasn't really about you it was so that the son of of God can be glorified. I'm going to my seat now, y'all, but can you lean over and tell your neighbor, say neighbor, after all you've been through, you cannot be a mutant mountain miracle. You cannot sit 
at the table like Lazarus. But if you're going to sit at the table, you ought to have your mouth open. Because the Bible says that Martha served. That was her, that was her gift of gratitude. And Mary she worshiped that was her gift to Jesus and Judas he criticized not the third Mary worshiped Judas criticized but Lazarus didn't say nothing and I'm closing when I tell you don't be like Lazarus but be like David, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make a boast of the Lord, and the humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. This is why I'm not mute mouth, because the Lord is good. This is why I'm not mute mouth, because the Lord is good. This is why I got something to say. Because the Lord is good. So make a joyful noise unto the Lord. All ye lands, serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that has made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pastors enter into his gate with thanksgiving enter into his court with praise be thankful be thankful grab your neighbor by the hand and say neighbor oh neighbor be thankful unto him and bless his name. This is why I'm not you about for the Lord is good. Is there anybody in here you can testify that the Lord is good? Well, mama used to say, if I can't say a word, I'll just wave my hand. You may not talk, but wave your hand and let the repeat. Love the Lord. Let him say so. Get up out your seat. Don't you sit there like Lazarus. Somebody stand on your feet and give him glory. Stand on your feet. Give him honor. Because when I think on the goodness of Jesus and how he done for me, soul it cries out hallelujah I thank God for saving me but if it had not been for the Lord who was on my side ah, I said where would I be I got good news for you this morning. This is why you can't be mute mouth. Y'all ready for it? Can I ask y'all a question? Has it been good to you? Well, this is why you can't be mute mouth. Cause we have been may endure for a night. But joy, yeah. And joy is coming in the morning. Joy is here. So open your mouth and shout, shout, shout. You can't be mute mouth because they woke you up. You can't be mute mouth because they're in your right mind. 
You can't be mute mouth. Because he healed you when you were sick. He can't be mute mouth. He put food on your table. He can't be mute mouth. He gave you a job to work. You can't be mute mouth. Because after all you've been through, you still got your praise. Say it. Yeah. for nobody. But how can you justify being quiet after all that God has done for you? You ain't that pretty and you ain't that sharp. You ain't all that. Oh, I don't believe in all that. Well, don't go to heaven. Because if you're looking for a quiet place, heaven ain't for you. Hell ain't either. Because they're going to be weeping and gnashing the teeth down there. So you got to decide which one you're going to do. One noise you going to make. Either it's going to be a joyful one Oh, it's going to be a weeping and a gnashing of teeth. And because I don't plan to go down there, I plan to go up there. I might as well rehearse now. I said rehearse now. It don't take all that, okay. You ride with that be sitting at that table because Martha served Mary worship Judas said don't let nobody out praise you for your miracle why is it his sisters are the only one and he was the one called back from death to life I got my questions out. I know why he was mute mouth. I know why he was mute mouth. I, I figured it out. Figured it out. Lazarus was just so happy to be alive that he didn't, he just didn't say nothing. He had that attitude. I'm just happy to be here. But you and I are on the other side of Calvary. Lazarus was pre-Calvary. You and I are on the back side of Calvary. So we can't act like Lazarus because we got something Lazarus didn't get. We got saved from sin. You don't thank God for nothing else. You thank him for saving you and I from sin. He saved us from eternal damnation. I told a friend the other day, everybody's standing, I promise you I'm done, the doors of the church is open. I told a friend the other day, 10 people in the Bible are noted for not telling God thank you after he worked a miracle in their life. Brother Bernard, I read it. I found it. I found it. You have the nine lepers that did not return back to say thank you. And now Lazarus sits at a table and he joins the band with the nine lepers. Got healed, experienced a miracle, but never said nothing. Don't be like that, church. 
don't lack gratitude. Every time God does something for you and you come to the table, tell him thank you. Every time he wakes you up in the morning, tell him thank you. Every, every time you're able to put one leg out the bed and turn and put the other one out and you stand on them, stand and tell them thank you. I'm done. Stand to your feet. I'm going to extend the invitation to you now. I know you say, y'all do a lot of standing in this church. We got the limbs to do it. I'd rather stand than lay. I did the eulogy of a young lady that was 45 years old yesterday. I was fine when I got here, but when I saw the obituary and saw her age, she's 45. As soon as I said, I said, man, she our age. Lord said, tomorrow's not promised. You're never too young to experience Calvary. You're never too old. You don't have to be old to die. But today is a day that you've never seen. And it's going to be a day that you'll never see again. If you're under the sound of my voice and you say, I don't want to be like Lazarus and just sit at the table. But I want to show God my gratitude. I want to give him my life today. I want to surrender my life to the Lord. I want, I want, to, I want to get connected in his kingdom. I want to be a part of a church. I need a pastor. I need a church family. I don't just need church membership. I need to be a part of a family. If that's you, and you're under the sound of my voice, and you say, I need to get connected. I need to give my life to the Lord. I want to be baptized. Step into that middle aisle now. If you're under the sound of my voice, step into that middle aisle. You say, Pastor Barry, you're talking to me. I don't want to be like Lazarus. I want to show God I'm thankful that he gave me another chance to get it right. I, they used to say, if at first you don't succeed, do what? Try again. When you're trying today, is giving your life to the Lord. Don't you walk out of this place not knowing where you will spend eternity. He said, behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man will hear, open the door, I'll come in and sup with him and he with me. If you're under the sound of my voice and you have not accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you need Jesus. It's better to have him and not need him than to need him and not have him. If you have not been baptized, then you need to come today. If you need a church home, you've been out of church for over 30 days, that's 30 days too long. You can't walk out of a marriage for 30 days and say, oh, I'm coming back home. No, you got to get reconnected. And I'm going to move expeditiously because I'm already past my time that I gave myself. But if you have accepted Christ as your Lord and Savior, if you have been baptized by immersion in the water, and number three, you're presently a member of a church, you've been there in the last 30 days, if you can say, yes, I've accepted Christ, yes, I've been baptized, yes, I'm a member of a church, I've been there in the last 30 days, if you can say yes to all three, take your seat. Only if you can say yes to all three. If you can't say yes to all three, keep standing. My sister in the black still standing. Somebody clap your hands for her. Come on, y'all ain't clapping. Young lady in the black shirt, have you accepted Jesus as your Savior? You have? Have you been baptized? You haven't? You believe in Jesus? You do? You believe he died for your sins? You know, baptism is a part of the salvation process. Mark 16, 16 says, For he that believeth and is baptized, the same shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be damned. So, baptism is really a, a, a test of your sincerity. We don't have to go through initiations, but baptism is when we're buried with Christ and we're risen to a newness of life. So, I want to invite you today to be baptized. Cheryl, you brought her today? Bless you, Sister Cheryl. She's like, I'm shy. I'm so shy. He talking. 
Yeah, I understand, but God loves you, even in your shy state. We're getting ready to baptize. I don't know if you want to come today, but you don't want to come. I'm not pressuring, but whenever you, when, don't wait too long. You hear me? I had to firm up when I said that. Because young people are, are prone to put things off, thinking you got a lifetime, but you don't have a lifetime. All you have is today. So make the decision to serve the Lord and give him your life today. So tomorrow, you'll have hope. All right? All right, bless you. Minister to us, Cheryl. My sister right there, you wave, raise, I see, I, I like that type of enthusiasm. You raise in your hand. Bless you, my sister. You've accepted Christ as your Savior. I see you got on the gown. You get ready to be baptized? Go on with your bad self. I ain't mad at you. I like that. I like this spirit in this church today. This your first time here? You've been here before? And you just came and put on the gown today and said, I'm getting baptized. And you join in it. Well, if you're getting baptized, you join it. Yeah, that's how this rolls. Well, bless you, huh? Giselle Watson. Well, bless you. Bless. Somebody say glory to Jesus. Glory to Jesus. Come on, let's get ready for baptism, church. But before we get ready for baptism, we got to give. It's giving Sunday, isn't it? We got to go, don't we? We're going to strive to reach that goal today, aren't we, Thomas? And I'm trusting that everybody's going to uh, jump in and jump in the river and do it. If you need an envelope, you can raise your hand. Our ushers can get you an envelope. Amen. Me and First Lady, we're going to start it off today. Amen. Showing our need of $1,000. I can't ask you for something that I'm not willing to do myself. Amen. Amen. I needed 50 people today that was so with us today. Uh, I'm not putting nobody on the spot, but I need everybody that's that's giving and give, give me your sacrificial seed with us today. Whether it's the thousand, whether it's the five hundred, whether it's the two fifty, whatever your number is, and you're giving in the giving Sunday. I want you to stand to your feet now. If you're giving with us in the giving Sunday, if you're giving, if you're giving with us in the giving Sunday, come on. Where are you? I need to know who you are. Bless you, bless you, bless you. Come on, deacons. In my uh, black bag with my phones on the, on the outside pocket, it's on my desk. It's a check in there. I need you to bring me that check. And it's, and it's good, too. Yeah, my wife said, bless the Lord. Because I remember when I used to have to struggle to do it. God be praised. He's turned my mourning into gladness and my sorrow into joy. Okay, those of you that are, those of you that would like to give today, I need you to stand. Those of you that would like to give, I need as many of you that can in here. We got a goal today in our Victory Sunday giving. We got a goal of 50,000, 50, but whatever your seed is towards it, your seed matters. Look at somebody and tell them your seed matters. And no, we're not about the money, but we just believe in giving and sowing and being blessed by God. This is not to make the pastor rich, but we got some things that we're doing around here at Praise Tabernacle. If you're watching virtually and you want to give, you can do that as well on our iChurch. We thank God for our iChurch members. We're getting ready to log off of our church right now. Will somebody clap their hands and thank God for everybody that's watching virtually. Thank you for watching. Thank you for tuning in and worshiping with us. We'll come back next Sunday, same time. No, matter of fact, next Sunday, come back at 1030. Our new service time, 1030 next Sunday because we got Sunday life classes at 9 a.m. Amen. I see you, Deacon Brissett, with that nice banana blazer on. God bless you. Yes, yes. He's going to take that off and get that to me after church. Hallelujah. All right, everybody standing. We're all giving today. We're all giving. It's a sacrifice. If you want to give electronically, we have multiple ways of giving. I need an ink pen. We have multiple ways of giving. Dick and them heart. We got, we got an ink pen right there. Yeah, that's a nice one too, Nimhart. I'm not gonna ask 
Spirit, God. 